Welcome to this program, Families Under God. Once again, it's a joy for me to have you watching this program because we do it for you and for your family. We pray that you'll be blessed as you uh, listen and watch and that you practice what you hear because our programs are intended to bring the families together. Hence, we call them Families Under God. And I would also like to remind you, or to let you know, if you are watching for the first time, that we meet here on Cabernet Gardens Home Care Fellowship every Thursday, 12.30 to 2. Please make a point of coming. And if you are absolutely not able to come, or you are watching from outside of Nairobi, we are on Zoom, and you can get our link from the office. Uh, the office number is 0722. 605089 and it will be there on the screen so that you can call and get a link if you want to have the program. Today I want to talk about fulfilling destiny. Uh, as I'm getting older I'm looking at people who have uh, missed their destiny, missed the plan of God for their lives and they feel like it's useless now to try, I'm too old, or I'm too poor, or this or that, and they give excuses. But I want to say, even from this message, and as I was preparing it, the Lord was encouraging me that any time we can fulfill our destiny. We don't have to say that because I lost it, because I missed it, because I got pregnant when I was in school, because I was married early, or because I'm a widow, or because I'm jobless, that everything is off completely. No. God gives us many, many chances, and God is there for us all the time. The story that was encouraging me and which I would like us to t share today comes from the book of Ruth. And some of you have read uh, the book of Ruth, others have not. But I would like us to read from Ruth chapter 1, and I'm reading the first seven verses. But I would uh, like to encourage you to read all of it because it's such a beautiful, romantic story. And let me tell you, I like these stories that talk about romance. We met, we, we talked, we got married, and on and on. And this is that, that kind of uh, story. Uh, Ruth chapter 1, verses 1 to 7. Long ago, and this is true, it's not, uh, it's not a parable, it is a true story. And it says, long ago, in the days before Israel had a king, there was a famine in the land. So a man named Elimerick, who belonged to the clan of Ephrath and who lived in Bethlehem in Judah, went with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Marlon and Chilion, to live for a while in the country of Moab. While they were living there, Elimelech died, and Naomi was left alone with her two sons, who married Moabite women, Opa and Ruth. About ten years later, Maron and Chilion also died, and Naomi was left all alone without husband or sons. Sometime later, Naomi had that the Lord had blessed his uh, people by giving them good crops, so she got ready to leave Moab with her daughters-in-law. They started out together to go back to Judah, but on the way she said to them, go back home and stay with your mothers. May the Lord be as good to you as you have been to me and to those who have died, and may the Lord make it possible for each of you to marry again and have a son. So Naomi blessed them and said goodbye, 
But they started crying and said to her, No, we will, we will go with you to your people. You go back, my daughters. Naomi answered, Why do you want to come with me? Do you think I could have sons again for you to marry? Go back home, for I am too old to get married again. Even if I thought there was still hope and so got married tonight and had sons, would you wait until they had grown up? Would this keep you from marrying someone else? No, my daughters. You know that's impossible. The Lord has turned against me and I feel very sorry for you. I could read the whole story, but time will not allow. That's why I have said, please read that whole story. And you will acquaint yourself with a woman who had every reason to quit, to give up, but she didn't. A woman who, in the span of 10 years, lost a husband and two sons. And that's all she had. It's not that she lost a husband and two sons, but had other sons that remained. No, that's all that she had. And you know, she and her husband and their two sons had left home in Bethlehem, Judah, because of famine and moved to a foreign country in Moab. They had moved from the familiar comfort of home to unfamiliar discomfort for survival. But as fate would have it, for Naomi, circumstances moved from bad to worse, running away from a famine. But when she got to Moab, she did not only uh, lose a son, as I have already said, or just the two sons and remained with the husband, but she lost the husband and the two sons. What a tragedy. She is left with her daughters-in-law, Opa and Ruth. Three widows, three in the span of 10 years. That is sad. That is what you call a crisis in a family. And it is in one family. For a moment, imagine the mourning period. In a span of 10 years, you finish mourning for the husband who died first, then the next son, and then the next one. She lost those that were very, very dear to her. We are not told what caused the death. Yet, before she could heal, from mourning for one, then another died, and another. Think about mothers and their sons. The loss was unbearable. Naomi could have quit. And I'm talking today to someone who is about to quit. Someone who is saying, what's the point of life? I want to tell you, it's not over until God says it's over. This tragedy, however, could not thwart the plan of God. In the plan of God, there was the seed chosen to bring forth Christ, a seed from Judah, Bethlehem, of the tribe of Judah. Naomi had been earmarked or predestined to incubate this seed even before the foundations of the earth and bring forth the son to ensure continuity of the seed that would bring Jesus Christ. However, as fate would have it, life was not giving her a fair chance. The man carrying the seed dies. Both the sons who would give continuity die. And all hope is lost for her posterity. A destiny is cut short. There is no seed, not just any seed, because then she could have remarried and bore a child, but that seed would not be in the order of the tribe of Judah, 
that was going to bring Jesus Christ. A destiny was at stake, and there seemed to be no hope. Let me tell you, your destiny may be at stake, but I want to pronounce today there is hope. If there was hope for Naomi, a widow who lost two sons, there is uh, hope for you. Naomi knew God. She pondered over this matter, maybe even prayed, asking God, What's, what do I do now? And something deep within her was begging her to have her destiny fulfilled. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 42, verse 6, My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Misa, deep course to deep, in the law of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over, over me. While she was downcast, a deep longing was calling, and something had to happen. She knew that this is not the end. Her gut feeling told her this is not the end. Something was going to happen. So she resolved to position herself and to go for her destiny in faith. How did she do it? As we read Ruth 1, verses 1 to uh, 6 and 7, we can draw some valuable lessons from Naomi and Ruth. Verse 6 says, Naomi heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them. She and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left Moab, where she had been living, and set out on the road that would take them back to Bethlehem of Judah, where they had originally left from. While they are on the way returning, Naomi had a thought and decided to release the two young women that they may find themselves new husbands. Let's pause for a moment. Naomi is wondering, where am I taking these young girls? They are better off without me. I have nothing to offer them. Some doubts and fears began ministering to her soul. So right there, in the middle of the road, she asked them to go back. I am imagining the scenario, like here in Gong Road, at the T-junction where we get in here. And Naomi has put her car, let's assume she was driving, aside, and is telling the two daughters, just go back home. Here is your fare. Take the bus and go back, or take an Uber. The conversation goes on, the kissing and the hugging, and a lot of tears. The Bible talks about loud crying. Three women crying loudly in the middle of the road. I guess people that were passing by looked at them and watched them and said, what's wrong with these women? One, after a lot of persuasion, went back. But Ruth decided, Oprah went back, but Ruth decided to go with her mother-in-law. Let me say something about mothers-in-law. So many people talk about bad stories about mothers-in-law. But look at this mother-in-law, who is not selfish at all. She is thinking about the welfare of her daughters instead of thinking about herself. And I also want to throw a word to you mothers-in-law. Be kind, like Naomi, to your daughters-in-law. She was crying, not so much for herself, but for them. This shows that truly they are good mothers-in-law. There may not be many, but I want you to know they are there. And for you that are getting married, 
Don't get married with the notion that mothers-in-law are bad. There are some very, very good mothers-in-law. So what do we learn from this story, especially concerning uh, claiming our destiny? Number one, we need to listen to what is happening. Listen to God and listen to what is happening in your situation. Naomi heard that the Lord had come to the aid of his people in Judah. How did she hear? There were no radios, no television channels, so she must have kept communication with the people around her and the people in Judah. I am saying, keep open communication with your people because it is through them that you will be able to hear. And it is so important that you hear. Stay alert like Naomi. She was alert and was well informed of what was happening in the environment. She was listening to what God was doing. She also stayed informed about the happenings of her old place, the place of origin, the place of birth. Thinking of this idea of being informed, I remember sometime, it's quite a while now, that one woman was complaining, like most women complain, that you, my husband, you don't talk to me. Even when you come home, you stay in the office the whole day, you come home with your papers, or you switch on the television. We never have one-to-one -one conversation. And she kept bothering the husband, so the husband decided one day, okay, okay, my dear, I will not read the papers. Just come, we watch television together. And as it happened, the, there was a, a game, a goal Mahia, they were playing football. And so this man loved goal Mahia, and he was uh, uh, cheering them up. And he, he told the wife, you know what, I really love goal Mahia. And the woman said, who is that? Who is that? Who is goal Mahia? Instead of uh, being happy, she now started to quarrel. Probably she thought goal Mahia is a girl, but... Let me tell you, we need to be informed. The man looked at her and said, didn't you say you want us to talk? Now, what is the idea of quarreling? Gold Mahia is the team that is playing. Imagine the woman who had not even heard about Gold Mahia. So if you want your husband to talk to you, get up to his standard. Don't be down there so that there is no communication. Be at his level, and for you men also. Raise your wife to the standard where she is equal to you because you may get opportunities in the office to talk with people. You may get opportunities to travel outside. You may get opportunities to go back to school that your wife is not getting. So raise her up so that she knows what is goal Mahia. So you need to get to a place where you are hearing. This is our first point. Get to hear. Get to hear. And when you hear, sort out the right information. Not hearing this could have cost her a whole destiny. So we need to be hearing what God is doing and decide what we are going to do. She heard of his provision. That means you have to be alert. Not only hear, but alert so that you sort out the information, what you hear. When you are aware of what God is doing, then you know how to respond appropriately and precisely. You also need to be aware of the provisions God has made for you as his daughter, born as if you were son, and as his people and as his family. May God bless you. May you take this message very seriously and tell yourself you are not going to give up. And if you are there and you are feeling desperate, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, for anyone whose destiny is being stolen by the enemy and they want to come back to you, those who have backslidden, those, Father, who have gone through so much trouble and they are trying to hear your voice and they are not able to, today I pray that through this message, my Father, you will speak to them and you will restore them and you cause them to go back to the destiny, Lord, in Jesus' name. And if you are there and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior, it's my prayer that you listen to this story. 
of Ruth saying, your God will be my God. May the Lord Jesus Christ be your God today. And if you'd like to receive him, let me pray for you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the message today. Please forgive my sins. Make me your child. Help me to go back on the destiny road, the road to heaven. And Father, help me to make it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to come to home care, as I said, we meet every Thursday, 12.30 to 2.30. And you can also be on Zoom, and I know you will be blessed. God bless you. Have a good day. Amen. Uh, good evening, viewers. My name is Veronica Kegondu, working with Home Care Spiritual Fellowship with Reverend Dr. Judy Bogwa. And uh, this evening we are going to be talking about uh, widowhood. And we have our guest, Elizabeth. Welcome to our program. Thank you. My name is Elizabeth Knight. I'm a mother of five kids and four grandchildren. I stay in Kibira slums and I'm a widow. You, are, you, say, you, you said you're a widow with uh, five children and four grandchildren. Uh, kindly let us get to know the, 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 how the journey has been uh, taking care of these kids single-handedly. I was married for 12 years. Then my husband started being sick. That was the year 2004, 2003 there. Then he was taken to the village and he passed on. So that's how I became a widow and I was left with my five children. Life has not been so good. I've been suffering with the children. I was doing these casual works, like washing, doing what? All my in-laws, my, my brother-in-laws, they brought a man and forced me the first inheritance. So I had to run away from the village and come back to Nairobi with my five children. So I've been suffering with them. I've been doing all those casual jobs so that I can feed my children. And even going to school and feeding themselves, I could not. It was so hard for me. What has uh, enabled you to make it this far? One day, I was introduced to home care by my last born son. He was going for the feeding program in Salvation Army Church in Kianda. So that's why I came to home care. So home care has been helping me a lot. I had nothing, I was even jobless. So even feeding the children was a problem. They could not even feed, they could not even clothe well, they could not even go to school well. The most of them, they were being chased to school because of school fees. But since I came here in home care, they have, re they have really helped me. They have been paying my son's school fees through OVC. I've been receiving food. I've been receiving some money to start business and even spiritual. We come here as sisters, we eat together, we pray together. So that one has, has even built my spirit. And now I don't, I'm not suffering a lot. At least I got a, a shoulder to lean on through home care program. Uh, thank you so much, Elizabeth, for sharing your story with us. Uh, we have heard about the challenges that the widows go through, uh, wife inheritance, joblessness, having to take the care of the children single-handedly. Uh, but we thank God because in, uh, in, the book of, in the Bible, the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 10, verse 18, gives us hope. It gives hope to the widows. And I will read Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18. He makes sure that orphans and widows are treated fairly. He loves the foreigners who live with our people and gives them food and clothes. Thank you so much for joining us in the program. As we said, a word of encouragement to all the widows. And also, I would like to share the word in James, James chapter 1, verse 27, which says, uh, What God the Father considers to be pure and genuine religion is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their suffering and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. Uh, thank you so much, our viewers. As you have heard Elizabeth tell us, uh, we have uh, programs at home care that are supporting the needy and the vulnerable. And one of them is uh, our orphaned and vulnerable uh, children program, 
whereby we support a children, uh, we have a feeding program and ed an education program. We are educating 195 children in primary school, secondary and university and graduate, uh, college level. We also are feeding them. Uh, we are feeding about uh, 600 children in our Bible clubs. Under the Orphaned and Vulnerable Children program, we are educating 195 children in primary school, secondary and uh, college and university. And we are also feeding them. We have nine Bible clubs and uh, we feed them. We, feed, we, feed the, we have 600 children that we feed every Saturday. And also, we have now the Fadili Women Program, whereby we are taking care of the widows. We have about uh, 25 of them. We have the Fadili Women Program, whereby we are, we are supporting uh, 45 women, uh, 25 of them as widows. Uh, we, we also we nurture them spiritually and also feed them. We have uh, the Bethel Dressmaking School, whereby we are training the school dropouts from Kibera, training them on dressmaking, and upon doing the government trade test, when they pass, we normally give them a machine so that they can start a business. If you'd like to partner with, it, with us in this program, feel free to contact us on 0722605089. Thank you so much for watching us. God bless you and have a blessed week. Well, have you been there? Take time. Right down at Karen, take a drive, and you will be sure to enjoy a quiet, serene, beautiful place for your conference facilities, for your accommodation facilities, just in case you have some of those guests coming in. Well, the place is Home Care Spiritual Retreat Center. Karibuni sana.